Have you ever felt trapped by your own negative thoughts, unable to break free from a cycle of doubt and worry? Can our mind change our reality by simply shifting our thoughts? Are you curious about how raising your vibration can help you overcome negative emotions and lead to a more joyful life? Do you want to learn practical strategies to transform negative self-talk into empowering affirmations? Are you ready to elevate your mindset and live a more joyful and fulfilling life? Join me after the intro for a conversation with a very special friend with whom we will answer this and many more questions. So grab a cup of coffee, settle in, and let's start. Hi, I'm Rosanna D, and this is Forgive and Thrive, a podcast where we explore what thriving in life means and how we can achieve it irrespective of our past, current condition, and expectations that those around us, or society in general, may have. Let's go. Welcome to the Forgiving Trace Show. We all have moments where, when our thoughts take a negative turn or two, and sometimes no matter how much we dislike the idea, we get stuck there. We feel as we have entered a never-ending loop of negative thoughts and emotions. A negative thought that leads to a negative feeling, which reinforces the original negative thought, and we keep going back and forth without finding a way out. Can you resonate? If so, you are not alone. Now, it may be common, but those negative thoughts don't have to dictate our feelings or actions. So today we want to explore practical strategies and gain powerful insights that can help us break free from those disempowering thought patterns and elevate our life. We discussed the nature of negative thoughts, the impact they can have on our well-being, and how raising our vibration can play a crucial role in overcoming them. And we dive into this fascinating topic in a conversation with our guest, Ellen Catherine Shamalov. Ellen is an enlightenment mentor, quantum healer, international speaker, two times best-selling author, and soul care coach, specializing in the Akashic records. In uh, early 2023, Ellen's life was appended when her partner made the decision to take his life. From despair, grief, guilt, and anger, she found herself immersed in emotional struggles that tested her resolve like never before. Ellen utilized her own quantum enlightenment system and the illuminated years of anguish, despite the common belief of grief's never-ending cycle. In this loss, she has been able to claim wisdom and enlightenment and continues to thrive in strength and empowerment. Ellen's goal is to support others as they embark on their journey by clearing any self-doubt, limiting beliefs, past traumas, and generational patterns. In doing so, they will be able to transcend fear, express their authentic inner self, feel liberated and joyful, and step into the realm of living their most authentic expression of their sovereign self. Hi, Ellen. Welcome to the Forgiven Thai Show. Thank you so much for being with us today. Oh, thank you for having me here. I'm so excited to share my message with everyone who's ready to receive it. Fantastic. Well, I just read your bio and your bio includes a very personal traumatic experience that you went through of losing your husband. So before we go into the conversation, I would really like to start with you and and your journey and in particular your experience in Mm -hmm. elevating yourself uh, from an experience that can destroy everybody's life. Well, I'm going to say that I'm grateful that... I became a spiritual teacher prior to him taking his life and that he was my catalyst. He was meant to come into my life at a certain point and he was meant to leave at a certain point. And because I'm a spiritual teacher and I've been doing this for almost 10 years, I already know that there are certain contracts that we have in place that we choose before we come here and incarnate in a physical body to experience certain things and to learn and to grow. And that's why we're all here to grow and to learn from our experiences. And so from the very beginning, I was a very angry person for a very long time prior to meeting Kim, even when I was a child. I've experienced a lot of things like, you know, divorce, my parents getting a divorce, uh, my father not being around, my mother losing a child before me. 
and therefore thinking that she was going to be able to give her next child more love, she had me, but she was emotionally abandoning me because she couldn't give love. She was still grieving from her loss. And so there's emotional abandonment, physical abandonment. The, the theme of abandonment has been playing out in my life, disempowerment. And I believe that obviously contributed to a lot of the anger that my body was holding on to. So, you know, I met my husband back in 2015. He kind of awakened me because I had some spiritual, I guess, abilities that I was in tune with when I was young, very young. And I got so scared with what they were that I ended up blocking myself off. And when he came into my life, he started showing me, we started watching this uh, spiritual thing on YouTube. We would be watching that as, as part of our dates. And it was something that just kept awakening different parts of me and my intuition became super strong. And so I was learning how to follow my intuition because for a long time, you know, we've been following the ego voice, the fears, the doubts, the worries. And it took me some time to really learn how to distinguish the voices, how to learn, how to listen and to understand when the higher aspect of me was talking, the, in, the, in, the intuition was talking versus the fear or the ego, right? So my journey with him was to help me awaken. We were together on this path to waking up and emotionally healing. And, you know, we, we went to a lot of emotional healing retreats instead of vacations. <laughs> and so um, there was one big one that, that really, really changed my life. And the way it happened was so synchronistic. The fact that we chose certain dates to go when they were having this retreat for emotional healing. And then um, this course on life lessons at the at very end, which was to me so synchronistic and it was divine um, because I felt like we were meant to be there at that time because of course I stayed for the class and we ended up learning about life lessons and and I, I knew after that retreat that I had to bring this home and to share this with other people. And so ever since I got home from that retreat, all I was doing was putting the life lessons together learning how those particular life lessons was impacting my life where in in which aspects with how where benjamin came from all of it and it really made so much sense to me it was just like a huge aha moment where i realized oh my god this is this is really profound this is absolutely what we're all going through you know we're meant to be these loving beings and we're meant to be here for a certain purpose and we're meant to heal all those those traumas and those things that have been holding us back and like i said i was angry for such a long time and i've been working through you know where the anger was coming from how to heal it what was causing it the life lessons around it it really helped me when i lost my husband because you know because of the information that i knew because of all the downloads that i received um even having received the quantum enlightenment system, which is an advanced healing method that was downloaded to me prior to him, three years before he died. I was able to understand more and more about the concepts of perception and, and limiting belief patterns and programs, where they're coming from, and really how to be able to see everything, every experience as a, as a lesson and learn the lesson. So with, when my husband passed away, I was obviously very devastated. I didn't know First of all, I was so determined to work on my business because I knew I had a mission here and I was so focused on my mission that I felt like I'm trapped now. I have a kid. I'm working this full-time job. It's not even enough to pay to support the lifestyle that we have. And we just moved to Florida five months prior to him taking his life. And he decided that he wanted to buy this, to be in this luxurious space. And that even caused more problems because I'm thinking, how the hell am I going to pay the rent? And it was just a moment for me of weakness where I was like, I, I, I can't live. I need to leave because if I can't do what I was meant to do here, then I'm done. I don't, there's no point in me suffering and being here. And so those thoughts were taking over me. And I had to sit with myself and sit with my life coach and, and really just talk it out. And I finally understood that 
well, this is an experience I'm here to learn. This, this was meant to happen. This was meant to be here. And so because it was meant to be here, there's obviously something I have to learn and stay in order for me to learn the lesson. So I had to remind myself every time where I was feeling doubt and I was feeling worried about the future or how I was going to do this. I had to remind myself that there is a higher purpose for me to, to, to be in this, this situation. And so I'm going to just follow through with what comes and happens. And I had to really sit with myself. So when we moved to Florida, we went to these healing retreats that was with medicine. And I, for the life of me, could never sit in place because we're supposed to take the medicine and like go meditate and, and try to, you know, heal things within. But I could never do that. I was always afraid to sit with myself. I didn't know I was afraid. I just didn't know how to do it. And I was like, oh my God, all these thoughts keep coming to mind. Maybe I'm doing this wrong. And I just kept talking, talking, talking while we were in the healing space. And so when I asked the guy who facilitates, when can I come back so that I can, you know, get over this thing or, you know, try to heal faster? He's like, uh-uh, you're not coming back. You need to sit with yourself. You need to learn how to meditate. Before you ever decide to come back, you need to sit with yourself. And because I had such a passion to grow and I had such a passion to, to go back to this thing, because I knew it was helping me a lot prior to my husband passing, I just was so determined at this point to sit with myself. And so that's where my transformation became a lot stronger because I learned to sit with myself and to connect to the frequency of Andre, who was my husband. And in, in that moment, I believed it was Andre, right? Because I called him in and I said, okay, I want to I wanna feel your love. So I would feel his love wrapping me up. And then and I would go in somewhere I never knew. So... As I practiced more, I learned how to be more in tune with what I wanted to feel and heal in those spaces, in that space of meditation. And I received a lot of downloads from him. He gave me a lot of messages. Um, I was lighting candles every month for him. And then each time as my days went by and the meditations went by and, you know, I was reflecting each time on something different. I realized that the emotions that I was feeling, they were connected to unconditional love and forgiveness. And a lot of the things that had come up in my reflections with him in my meditations and in lighting candles and like throughout the day as they were processing, I finally understood that there was a reason why he and I had that time together. And there was a reason why he needed to leave at the time he left. And I couldn't be angry with him. You know, everybody around me was angry. How did he leave you? Why did he leave you? Why did he leave his son? How could he do that? He loved his son so much. What came over him? But because I understand in a different perspective, I couldn't be angry because I understood that he thought he was doing the right thing. He thought that it he was he was helping me, which on a spiritual level is actually true because that is the message I received afterwards as well, that he was meant to leave so that, number one, I could grow at a higher length than I have ever known possible and because I needed to go through this experience. He was done. He finished his contract. He needed to go. And so this, it really did transform me. It really did bring me into a level that I never thought I would possibly in, be in. Wow. First and foremost, as I said before, the experience that you had is, is obviously uh, very difficult. And I'm sorry that you had to go through that. But obviously, I, I appreciate all the growth that came out, out of that. And there are a number of aspects that actually caught my attention. Uh, in uh, listening to you, uh, one is uh, uh, all the emotions that at the beginning were making you feel stuck. And a lot of people keep navigating and ruminating on situations and they get attached to those emotions instead of just saying, okay, these emotions are telling me something. As you said, there is a lesson there. And I, I, I love that. And that is the second word that caught my attention. The third is uh, awakening. 
from my other life. And that, again, is something that I think as a society we are not ready to do or we don't go into very easily. I don't know what you think about it. And then the, the other is uh, the experience when you were meditating and being with yourself. It's difficult to just stay with those feelings and, and, and emotions. You know, you, you, you keep busy. A, a, a lot of, one of the, of the way we, we react to, uh, to the situation is to get busy and, and, and to find something new to do because we want to fill the time and not stay still with our thoughts. So I, I feel that, that kind of experience. And I would like to go a little bit deeper, if you, if you don't mind, at least with, with those, those points, starting with how not productive really or, uh, or good for us is to, to stay stuck in, in a situation and, and keep ruminating, but also how we recognize that that is rumination because very often when it, it happens it's easy to say oh i was wrong you know even in your case is what exactly the other people were saying right how could he take his life and leave you in, in that situation so you you keep yourself stuck in that situation because you think well i'm right it's in my right to to, to do that right does it make sense? That being in victim mentality, when you are going to use the emotions and say, well, now I have a right to be angry or now I have a right to be like this and this is this person did this or that and whatever, that's you, number one, not taking full responsibility for having an experience. You take full responsibility because number one, you chose to have this experience prior to you coming here. So it's all a matter of a perspective, right? Once we have the level of perspective of understanding that, number one, we're here for a grander purpose. My soul is in a body. I'm not my soul. I am not my body. But my soul is in a body. So when you, first of all, have a perspective on that and understand that there is a grander purpose for you to be here, that already starts to shift your vibration because now you have an understanding that this experience that you're having is meant to teach you something because if there is a grander purpose for you being here what is the grander purpose it's not just to live a nine to five job it's not just to you know have an experience here and be a good person here and then go to heaven or hell that's what they want you to believe but the truth the truth is that you are a spiritual being having a dense physical experience and so when you start to live your life saying okay now, I have these emotions for a reason. I'm experiencing this for a reason. Let me explore what is what is happening. And all the questions you ask lead to one thing. It's meditation. And I'm going to tell you right now, meditation is not just about calming your mind, even though it's great. The misconception is that meditation is only about centering yourself. But it's not. It's a great tool to center yourself. However, Meditation is also to release energy. It's to heal yourself on a quantum level. It's to come back inside yourself so that you're connecting to your soul and you're telling your soul, hey, this is, this is what I want to receive from you right now. And so the problem that I hear people saying all the time, which is why I created the course I created, is I can't meditate, my mind goes off. My mind is too busy. That's the number one problem that I had too. I never meditated. Even when I was a spiritual teacher prior to my huge transformation after my husband's passing, I could never meditate for the life of me. I had to put on binaural beats. I had to do guided meditations. I had to do all these things just to get myself in a meditative state. And I would never remember what happened because I would fall asleep. It's not really falling asleep. You go into a different state of consciousness. But when you become super intentional and you can overcome your mind in that time. It's not just being centered and being in that space, but you also can heal yourself on a cellular level, which is super, super important to do now that we're here and we understand the perspective of healing, right? So going back to the questions about emotions, we've got this new perspective now on life, and now we're here in this space of 
anger or disappointment or whatever it is, right? So we can take that to the next level and sit with ourselves and say, why am I disappointed? Show me what is causing the disappointment. Because on a conscious level, you know somebody was in whatever, but also there's more to it. It's coming up in your life right now, right? Because of the fact that it is internally in you. And if the law of physics is the law of reflection. So in physics, quantum physics, right? The law of reflection states that life, your universe is a mirror of you. So whatever you're experiencing is because you have something within you internally in your body that is holding that frequency of disappointment, anger, whatever you're experiencing, that is ready to be dissolved, cleared, right? So when you have that experience, it's your opportunity to say, okay, I'm holding this emotion in my body. I am ready to remove it so that I can be at a higher vibration. I want to be happy. So how do I be happy? Let's remove this energy out. Let's move it out. Because a lot of us times we suppress, right? So this is all suppression of energy um, from past lives, from current lives, from childhood. A lot of people don't want to feel the feels because it hurts. It's easy to keep yourself busy. It's easy to just keep it inside and live your life. But actually, it's the worst thing you can do for yourself because you're literally creating suffering every single day because you're saying, I want to live a happier life. I want to be happier. I want to live this. I want to have this money. I want to I have all these experiences. But shit, I'm living in this like hellhole right now where I'm suffering and feeling like I have to survive in this world because you've created that for yourself. You've literally suppressed everything to the point that now you're creating this world unless you actually clear it out, you won't experience a higher level. It's just physically impossible. This is so interesting because if I understand correctly what you're saying is whenever we suffer, it's because we are basically bottling up all these bad experiences so we keep experiencing exactly the same bad situations over and over. But the other thing that I found also very interesting is that when these feelings start to bubble up is when we are ready to release them. And perhaps the normal behavior is to get more upset and more angry and, and to bottle things even more up. Do I get it right? Uh -huh. Yes, unless they end up exploding. And this is why lessons become harder and harder and life experiences become harder and harder. Because, so I teach about the seven life lessons, right? And there are three to six different emotions tied to each life lesson. So there's life lessons that you are meant to experience. And so if you're experiencing these emotions, it's literally telling you, that there's a life lesson that you need to, to, to learn in order for you to stop the karmic cycle and stop the karmic loop of you constantly going through these things. Because if you don't learn it the first time when it's a little bit easier, it'll get harder and harder and harder until you reach advanced level and you're like, oh my God, I'm... And this is what most humans do. They go to the level where it's an extreme case where everything just literally collapses in front of them because they haven't seen the signs before. So the whole point here is Hey, if you see the signs now, don't suppress it. Heal it now. Find a way to dissolve it now so that it doesn't keep on bottling up and showing up in your life because you want to learn the life lessons in order for you to be able to create a better experience for yourself. Interesting. So what are these uh, life lessons? Um, is it something that is common to everybody? We all have to it's learn those? so funny. It's so funny that you're asking that. Go ahead, continue your question. Uh, no, if it's something that everybody needs to, to learn the same lessons or is very much specific of, of the individual. So they go through a number of experiences and each of these experiences can bring a lesson, but other people may have completely different experiences and therefore completely different lessons. Yeah. 
So in my experience, let's say with my husband's passing, there were people who were angry and I was not angry. I was angry for a moment because I forgot that there was the the whole point of him doing this, right? But that showed up. So that meant that I had to work on that. So I was angry for that moment, but it wasn't because I wanted him to choose a different experience. I knew why he, he needed to choose that experience, but it was because I forgot for that moment and anger is tied to the life lesson of control. I wanted to control the outcome. I wanted to have more control over my life so that it can go a certain way. But that's just not the way it works. It's not because we've created a map for ourselves. We already created that. We don't know it. We don't remember it on a conscious level, but it's it's playing out in our lives. So the seven life lessons are separation, control, identity, judgment, forgiveness, unconditional love, and divine guidance. They don't go in a specific order, but they work hand in hand, right? And so what I mentioned earlier was that with my husband, and again, with the mirroring, right? When I realized all the things that I used to say to my husband, that he wasn't open enough and that he wasn't um, able to receive my love. And when I realized how he was acting, he didn't know how to ask for the love. And so he acted in a certain way where for him, it came out of love, but it, it didn't initially for me. But when I started reflecting on it, I understood, wow, you just really wanted to be loved. And that's a mirror for me too, where I said the things that I said to him and I realized I was talking about myself. I was not open enough. I was the one who was not able to receive love. And when I realized this concoction that, that happened, it came to reflecting on the fights that we had and how I would, you know, shut down and I wouldn't want to, to get into a vulnerable place because I was afraid that if I was too vulnerable, that he would take advantage. And so there was a fear of being rejected, fear of taking advantage of fear of, of showing myself to him. And so I would shut down and be a complete, like different person, not show my love, not show that I was afraid to lose him and whatever, and had this wall up. And then I realized, wow, that's, there's so much guilt and regret about that. There was a lot of guilt and regret around doing that and being that way. And so I remember saying to myself, this is at the fourth month when I realized unconditional love was the lesson, the big lesson. He stopped coming into my meditations after that. <laughs> so I realized, okay, this was, this was, was, this is what I really needed to learn. I, I realized that because everything is a mirror to us, the fear of rejection doesn't exist because if a person is rejecting me, they're not actually rejecting me. They're rejecting themselves because they can't receive the love, but it has nothing to do with me. And so I realized that I even made a vow going forward. I'm always going to show my vulnerable side and I'm always going to show my truth and be authentic and, and be raw without worrying that the other person is not reciprocating or without worrying that, you know, they're going to take advantage or they're, that they're going to reject me because again, it's about, it's a mirror. So I cannot take that as my mine. It's theirs. And so you, that's how you kind of learn to see things in a different way and understand that whatever's happening outside of you is the opportunity for you to fix what's inside of you. Because once you know that you're the only person that you need to worry about, you don't have to have those fears or concerns about helping other people or, you know, fixing other people or fixing what's outside of you. You just have to concentrate on yourself. And then that will open up the door for other things to, to come into fruition for you. I can see that being something very difficult to do for many people. So what would be the advice that you would give to anybody that is trying to, to do their, their best to, to help others. So where can they start shifting their interest and their attention in, on themselves? One of the things that I did for myself was, and people will go through highs and lows, right? So this is why this is really important. You listen to a podcast that's so empowering and you're like, yes, I'm God in a body and blah, 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 or whatever. Right. Or yes, I'm so happy. I'm abundant and whatever. You feel great because you just heard this really empowering podcast 
But then the next day you go back down and you're like, oh my God, my life sucks and blah, blah, blah. And you start concentrating on all these other things. So one of the things that helped me stay elevated and more motivated to continue my journey into healing was to write down when I'm really elevated and feeling really empowered, all the things I just heard that really resonated with me. Affirmations. I don't believe in affirmations, but in this case, I'll explain why this one is powerful. When you start speaking to yourself in a certain way, your, your mind is like a computer. So you start to train the mind to think in this trajectory, right? But that doesn't take away. I just want to preface this really important. It doesn't take away the traumas that you are really holding in your body because the body is also a computer. It holds all the programs, all the traumas, all the experiences, emotions from your childhood, from generational DNA, ancestral stuff. It holds the programs and, and all the stuff that you were meant to come here with so that you can clear childhood trauma, past lives, whatever, all of it. Your body is holding all of that. So think of a computer uploaded with a billion programs and that's what needs to be worked on first. You need to re remove those things, those programs out of your system in order for you to have a higher vibration, in order for it to work faster, in order for it to have more power. So what we're doing here is helping your mind to be more inspired to keep going down this route. So what I did was I would take down, I would write down all these, these affirmations about, you know, I'm a God in a body. I am powerful. I have, I'm abundant. I'm financially wealthy, blah, blah whatever, whatever you heard that is so empowering to you that sparks a light, you write it down and then you record yourself saying it, but you have to say it with so much power. If you read it off a dam, it, it doesn't do anything, right? It doesn't change anything in your body. But when you start to, when you say it with like real truth and feeling, saying it, recording yourself saying it, and you listen to that the first thing in the morning, it works because number one, it's your own voice not someone telling you it's not affirmations you picked up on you know whatever it's not hypnosis it's you telling you the truth of what just empowered you what sparked you so that you start your day on a more powerful note but what I also added were things like um I accept that my that all my experiences are meant to teach me a life lesson I accept that I'm here for a grander purpose I am grateful for all the lessons that I am learning on my journey of life. So when I said that to myself, it was kind of like setting the intention that this is how I'm going to think so that I can continue to do those things. And then it helped me get into a deeper cellular level healing because I was more inspired and motivated to look at life in that way, to heal myself and to to be appreciative of all the all the experiences that I have because they're meant to teach me something. You mentioned appreciation and, and gratitude. This seems to be quite an important aspect of that journey, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, you know, my parents still worry about me and they, they think because I was suicidal in the beginning, they question, oh my God, maybe you're, you're going to go and do the same thing. And, you know, they they worry. And I, I've had several conversations with them saying, you guys have to understand that I'm in a really good place right now. I know that he did this for a reason. He was meant to leave. He was meant to go at this time. And even though it sucks that he left the way he left and, you know, his son has to deal with the trauma of it, I'm so grateful because I didn't realize who I was in that marriage. So much had shifted for me. I'm a better person than than who I was when I was with him. And so I've I've said to them, like, I've I'm really looking at all these things in a different light than you guys. And you have to understand that I'm I'm grateful for this experience. To me, this experience was a huge gift. And that's what I keep saying to people, even though I went through the shit and the heartache of going through that and 
the pain, but I'm grateful that I was able to grow from it tremendously. So because of my growth, I'm so grateful for that experience because if I didn't have that experience, I wouldn't be where I am today. You mentioned your, your parents and you mentioned the fact that they were concerned about you possibly taking your own life. And when we go through situations like the one you went through, obviously we have a lot of people that try to help us. They try to advise us. They try to, to talk us exactly uh, in and out of, you know, what we should be doing and what we shouldn't be doing. How important is to create around you a, a real supportive network? And how can we build that network in a way that is really serving that higher purpose? The way I see it is being around people who empower you is very important. And you can tell the difference between a person who's empowering you or a person who's putting you down. Person who says, you're not ready, or that's not good, or are you sure that's what you want to do, blah, blah, blah. Those are people who are disempowering you. Those are the fear. They're projecting their own fears. But then you have people who hear you, who listen to you, who say, I'm here for you, who respect your boundaries. You know, when I talk to someone and they're telling me their, um, the things that they're going through, Number one, I tune in to see, are they ready to hear a different perspective? Because I'm getting information about what's going on with them. So I ask them, even with my clients, I ask them, can I share my, my perspective with you? Can I share what I'm getting? Because I want to respect whether someone is ready to receive that information or not. And so you were talking exactly about what I'm, what I'm actually going through right now. I've decided... You know, with, with my husband, number one, my sexual energy just completely depleted. I felt like I was, like, I didn't know who I was. And when he passed away in, you know, a few months after the fourth month of me going through my own healing, I took it to the next level and I started to work on my sexual energy, started learning more about what I like, what I don't like, who am I inside? What do I like to do? And then I, when I realized about sexual energy, when I realized about my energy, I realized that all of us, we have this sacred energy and we need to be more frugal for the lack of a better term of who we're sharing this energy with, who deserves to be in our field. Who do I want to share my voice with? Who do I want to share my energy with? Who do I want to share any of whatever I am embodying with. I'm in this phase of, I cut out a lot of people in my life recently who did not feel in alignment because I've created more boundaries for myself. It's more of like what I desire. So I'll give you an example. Prior to Andre passing, we were part of this community where we were doing the emotional healings and stuff like that. And I think part of why I loved going so much other than the healings that I was receiving was being in that community, was having these friends and these people that were on the same like-minded journey, you know, who, who were willing to grow, who didn't want to be in victim mentality. That I already knew I wanted to be around. And so being around those types of people who are in alignment with the same kind of journey that you're going, going on is important. I also felt like to a certain point, you know, when my parents were worried about me and whatever, they didn't want me hanging out there because they thought that the reason why he died was because of the medicine. But he, they don't realize that he had an underlying mental illness that was never diagnosed. And so, you know, they, they were constantly telling me that I shouldn't grow and I shouldn't do these things and I should pace myself and I, I shouldn't be going to all these healers or I shouldn't be healing myself like this or maybe my healing is, is stopping me from being a good person. I just decided to stop listening to them. And I told them, I don't want to hear your opinion. I don't want to hear your advice. So if you cannot respect that, then I'm going to have to like just cut my ties. And so it's actually funny that you mentioned that because this morning, because I've been kind of getting away from them this morning, I just told them, you haven't respected my wishes when I've clear, I made it clear as day that I do not want to hear your advice 
I don't want to hear your opinions. It's not because it sways me because the energy can sway people, especially when they're still growing and learning about themselves and trying to understand more about what they want to do and which way to go. But when you hear things like that, you already know it's fear. Don't go do this. Is this safe? It, it, like all those types of things about fear will just bring you down without you even knowing it. Because if you're holding it within yourself, it will get attracted and it will start to rumble things up for you. Maybe it's good because, you know, it's opportunity for you to grow and to dissolve some of that fear. But at the same time, when you're on your journey, it's important to be around people who are going to support your journey, who are going to lift you up and who are going to respect your boundaries. When I was making those friends, I realized, you know what? I'm always the one reaching out to most of these people. No one reached out to me. They were there for me at the time when my husband passed. I got the support that I needed. And at this point, it seems like the alignment is no longer in alignment. It seems like whatever they were there for, they're not needed in my life anymore. It's not saying that I use them or anything like that, but it's just feeling the difference. I needed them at that moment and they were there. And at this time, I'm in a different place and I'm creating these boundaries for myself. And I'm saying, what kind of relationships do I want to have? I want to have relationships with people who are reciprocating this energy with me, who care enough to reach out to me. And if it's only one-sided, then I don't want to do it. So I decided to cut ties with a lot of people who were not meeting the emotional needs that I knew I needed in a, in a connection and cut ties with people who were not supporting my journey or who were bringing me down with their, their own projections. And now I'm in the space of I've created space for myself to now make new, better connections with people who are going to be in more in alignment with now my newfound energy. I think this is a very important point because a lot of people, and I was very much one of them, think that perhaps when someone enters in your life, then they have to stay for the rest of your life. And I, this is a, a lesson that I had to learn the, the hard way um, with my own situation, with my own uh, experiences uh, very, very recently, where I had to sort of cut a lot of people that used to be friends and I used to call friends and they didn't show me the level of friendship that I needed when I needed it. They, they were in my life, we had good times, but, but then you, you realize that you, as you said, you are in a different space and, and that, that person has in, 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 a, in their own and, and these two spaces are no longer the same or, or connected in any way. So uh, thank you for, for sharing that. I think it, it's something very, very difficult to, to let go of these relationships uh, until you realize that they are almost hurting you. Yes, and yes. You but it all comes back to really self-discovery. You know, I didn't know this about myself. That all my life I've been pretty much running after all my friends and I didn't realize that that was the, the pattern I had and that what I was bringing into the relationships. And, and, you know, when you learn more about yourself, when you can feel secure within your own being and understand that as you grow, as you go onto this journey and you learn different lessons and you, you are embodying more of your higher self, right? When you're more embodying your higher self, you're at a different vibration that already shifts your vibration because you're healing, you're releasing all that stuff from your body. You're making space for your higher self to be in the physical vessel. And so that means now you're at a different level than these people. And so even though at the moment, right, well, let's think about intrusive thoughts for a second, even though at that moment, and this happened to me too, I'm not perfect. It'll happen, but this is where you come in and you remind yourself that person is not in alignment with me anymore. That's not a rejection. I just know that there's no space in my life for that type of connection. And so I allow myself to free myself from that connection so that I can make space for something different and better. This is a grieving process that this is where suppression comes from. Nobody wants to grieve, but we grieve jobs, the loss of jobs. We grieve the loss of people, we grieve the loss of things, you know, and this is why my experience with my husband passing was super important because it made me realize that 
we are always, or we should be always up leveling, right? That's the whole point of being here. We're always on this path to up leveling. We're going to lose people on the way up there. We're going to lose things on the way up there. It's all a matter of perception. How are you going to perceive this? Are you going to allow it or are you going to resist it? Because the more you resist it, the more you're creating suffering for yourself because it's not in alignment with you and it's for your betterment to allow it, surrender it and just say, you know what? This is a constant reminder in your mind. Even if you have to go through that, you know, list and creating the new empowerment things that you want to say to yourself, I'm going to say empowerment affirmations, you're just reminding yourself because there is a high and a low as you grow. There's a high because you've embodied more of your light and it's, it feels amazing. And as it assimilates and integrates into your physical being, you're going to go down into a low because it's not such a high energy anymore. It's now part of you. And so it's making more space for things to go. So you'll, you'll go back down into that spiral of, of self doubt or, or, you know, sadness or whatever, but that's just opportunities for you to see it, release it, dissolve it, and then continue to empower yourself to go down this journey so that you can continue the beautiful things that you're seeing coming into your life. That's absolutely beautiful. And I want to take that uh, concept a little bit farther and connect to the name of this podcast, Forgiven Tribe. You mentioned forgiveness uh, before talking about the life lessons. So I, I wanted to ask you what you think about that, that concept. You know, uh, for me, it was a kind of roadmap that came to me, to use your words, um, as I went through some uh, experiences and, and some healing. And I had to forgive, meaning I had to accept what happened, but also I had to give myself permission to move forward. And, and that was the forgiveness part in order to thrive again. So I wanted to learn what you think about that and how that fits into this idea of the life lessons that we have to learn. Well, forgiveness is one of the life lessons. And the reason why is number one, going back to the original first truth, we are all souls embodying a physical vessel. And so part of my experience when I had to forgive myself, because, you know, part of when Andre passed away, when I realized all that unconditional love stuff, I realized that I needed to forgive myself because I didn't know better at that moment. And I needed to forgive him at the time when I was angry with him because I knew that he was doing whatever he was meant to do. He wore the physical suit, the human suit, did whatever he had to do as he was here. But when he's not in the physical suit, he's a soul. And so we go back to the the perception, right? This person is just playing out a role that they're meant to play in order for them to, or in order for me to learn this lesson, in order for me to heal, in order for me to do this. It's not all centered around you. It's not about ego, but you have to look at everything as a reflection and understand the truth that that person is just trying to show me something that I need to see for myself. And you have compassion because then you understand that this is not really a person, it's a soul meant to do a job, it came to do a job. It's playing in the video game as, you know, whatever character it came as. So that already helps you to go into forgiveness because you're learning now that you can't take everything so personally. It's not something they're doing on a conscious level, but they're they're playing out the role that they're meant to play. That already helps you to understand it on one aspect. The other aspect is forgiving yourself. Because when you forgive yourself because you didn't know better, you release that anger with yourself like, oh, I can't believe I was angry. I can't believe I was like this. I can't. You, you, there's shame around it, right? So we want to dissolve the shame, dissolve the guilt, dissolve all those types of emotions that we might have felt or created within ourselves or the thought processes that we created in ourselves about how bad we are because we thought this or we did this or whatever happened, right? Whatever we're forgiving ourselves for. Because if you're harboring on this shame, the guilt, all these negative emotions, and then you're creating these thought patterns for yourself, 
you're not going to be able to thrive. You're just going to, you're like suffering. You're not even surviving. You know what I mean? So it's all about fully letting go of all these emotions and forgiving yourself. You know, I believe that forgiving yourself really, really comes so strongly when you can understand that there's a higher purpose for you to be here, that you're meant to grow from everything. Because once you understand that, it's just, it's like going back to it. You know, my friends and I, we always talk and, you know, they're, they're spiritual like I am. They're very powerful, but sometimes you need that community, that support to remind you of these things. So I would remind her, Hey, that's what this lesson is about for you. It's about releasing this from yourself so that you can up level so that you can go into unconditional love. That's what it leads to. When you are in a neutral space to have unconditional love, that's when you're going to be able to really accept all these things that are happening and to forgive yourself because you know it's just part of the journey and forgive that person because you know it's just part of the journey. Beautiful. Alina, I would like to come back very quickly on, uh, on you before we conclude this beautiful conversation. Ask you, what you are working on, is there anything that you want to share with us? So I think the number one thing I want to share is the program that I have. It's the queen of your heart. It's an accelerating, it's a manifestation accelerator um, program. Right now it's for women and it's going live sometime in November. I didn't put a date solid yet for that because it's still fluid. I'm going with the flow. Um, however, it is going to be in November and it's a five week program all about coming back to yourself, really learning how to meditate properly, how to fully love yourself and to discover who you are so that you can become this more powerful being on your journey and accept love and live a much more happier life. So if our listeners would like to know more about it, where they can find you? They can find me in catalytichealing.com. However, I'm offering free Akashic readings um, for anyone. So if they would like to text me, my phone number is 561-862-2932. Um, you know, they can find me on WhatsApp as well in case they're out of the country, out of uh, America. <laughs> and um, they can just text me, I'm ready to manifest. And then I'll know that they're they're looking for an Akashic reading and then we'll schedule the Akashic reading for them complimentary. Fantastic. Ellen, very final question. If there was one take home message that you would love everybody to remember from this conversation, what that would be? Always ask, what is this experience teaching me? Absolutely beautiful. Well, as we wrap up this journey today with, with Aline, we have learned that every experience, no matter how difficult, no matter how challenging it is, is still there to teach us something. So we need to look at it and, and learn from, uh, from that experience. And until we learn that experience, we cannot really move forward. And with this in mind, uh, I want to leave you with a very insightful quote from Buddha, because when, as we said before, sometimes when we keep ourselves too stuck in our thoughts and ruminating on them, we can move forward. So our mind is everything and what you think you become. So pay attention to what you think. Alin, thank you so much for accepting our invitation, for sharing so much about your life story and very challenging uh, situations that, that you had, but also very grateful for, for your journey and uh, for what you shared with us today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Fantastic. Well, we would love to know what you think about this topic. Do you have thoughts and feelings and emotions that are taking you and keeping you stuck in your life? What is your life purpose, really? Let us know. And if you feel challenged, I'm sure that you will find this episode very inspiring. And if you need, obviously, extra help, don't forget, check Ellie's website, her work, and follow her on social media. You will find all the links in the description of today's episode. Hopefully not, but if you have been affected in any way by the topic we discussed today, as always, I invite you to seek professional help. Join me next time when we will continue exploring inspiring and challenging situations. Because remember, we are together in this journey. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy this content, subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the notification bell and like this video. See you in the next one.